Hi there. Since you know what a quadratic equation is, in this video I am going to show you how to factorize them. So here, uh, actually you have got uh, four ways of solving a quadratic equation. So one is factorization method. That is what I am going to teach you in this video. And the other one is formula method. Third one is least square method. And even graphically you can solve a quadratic equation. So anyways, here I am just going to tell you about the factorization method. While doing factorization, look at the quadratic equation given. First bring them, make it in the general form. Make it in this form. Ax squared plus bx plus c form. Okay. So see that your quadratic equation is in this form. And then... Next thing you have to do is see if there is anything common, any common factor in this equation. If you have any common factor, try to take it out by dividing throughout by that number. And then you would check if the x squared term is just a bare x squared term. That is the a coefficient here, this a would be 1. If it is 1, it wouldn't have been mentioned. They just start here. You have an example here. The first one is a bare x squared term, right? You don't have a number in front of the x squared. So check if you have a number there or not. Because if you have a number there, you have to be a little more cautious and you have one more step to do. Now, this is the first equation. I'll show you how to factorize it. So first see if anything is common there. No, there is no common factor. Now, it is a bare x squared term. So, you have to take two numbers such that product of the two numbers should give you this term. That is plus 3. And when you add them up, you should get the middle term which is the coefficient of middle term that is 4. Understood? So, see what numbers are possible. You have to get two numbers such that when you multiply them, you get plus 3 and when you add them, you should get plus 4. So, just see what are the factors of 3, okay? You can write that. So, 1 comma 3 is the factor of 3. And uh, there's no more um, numbers, right? 1 and 3 makes 3 and there is no combination as such. So, now look, when you multiply 1 and 3, aren't you getting 3? Yeah, good. So, when you add them, Aren't you getting plus 4 when the sum of 1 and 3 gives you 4? Yeah, it gives. So the numbers are 1 and 3. So both are positive. Okay. So these are the factors. You can straight away write x plus 1. And the next factor is x plus 3. Okay. You got the two numbers. Straight away you can write them. So if they had asked you to factorize. To write in, in factors, you can just stop here. But if they ask you to solve for x, then you will have to go one step further and solve it. So how do you solve? You take x plus 1 equals 0. You equate both the factors to 0. So your x would be minus 1, right? So this is one answer and the other one is x plus 3 is equal to 0 so your x would be minus 3 right when you take the 3 to the other side it becomes minus 3 and hence you get the answer as x equals minus 1 and x equals minus 3 these are the solutions for uh, x square plus 3x plus 3 the second one is x square plus 7x plus 10 equals 0 right now I told you the product should give you 10 plus 10, okay? And the sum should give you plus 7. So what are the possibilities you have? The possibilities to get 10 is 1 times 10 or it is 2 times 5. You have only these two possibilities. Now, the factors of 10 I have written. Now, uh, 1 and 10, whether you add or subtract, is not give, going to give you 7. So, this is ruled out. Secondly, you have 2 and 5. 
Yeah, of course. You add the seven, 2 and 5, you get 7. So the numbers are plus 2 and plus 5. Okay. So we got the factors. You can fill in. So that would be x plus 2 is one of the factor and the other factor would be x plus 5. So you got the factors to find the solution, to find the value of x. Now you have to equate it to x plus 2. I equate to 0. So my x would be negative 2. And here x plus 5, the second factor I am equating to 0. And the value of x would be minus 5. The third one, here you needn't find the factors. It has already been done, right? Half the work is already done. You have them in factor form itself. All you need to do is to find the value of x. So, you just need to equate it. x plus 1 equals 0. So, what your x would be? Taking the 1 to the other side, it becomes minus 1. You have x minus 5 equals 0. The second factor is x minus 5 equated to 0. And when you take the 5, negative 5 to the other side, it becomes positive 5. And you, the value of x is negative 1 and 5. Similarly, this is the same thing. They have given you the factors, the fourth one. But there is a slight difference like how you find the value of x. Mere algebra, you are doing mere algebra, okay? So it is 2x minus 1 equals 0. That is the first factor. I am equating it to 0. So I just keep my 2x on my left and I take the negative 1 to the other side. It becomes positive 1. And then now I divide throughout by 2 so that I get x equals half. So the value of x is half here. Now the next factor is 3x minus 1, right? 3x minus 1 equals 0. Same way you just take the negative 1 to the other side. You would be left with 3x, plus, 3x on my left. And this would become positive 1. And now dividing throughout by 3, I would get x equals 1 third. These are the solutions for the fourth one. You look at the fifth one. See here, this is not a bare x, right? You have got 5 as coefficient for x. So you need to be real careful here. What you need to do is multiply the extremes. You are multiplying this 5 and negative 14, okay? That would be your product. So your product is 70, negative 70. So when you multiply, you should get negative 70. And when you add them up, you should get minus 3, okay? Negative 3. And I hope you understood how it is negative 70. You are multiplying the extremes 5 times minus 14. Okay. That is what has given you negative 70. Okay. What are the possibilities? Again, let us see. How do you get? What are the factors of 70? You have too many. Let's check one by one. It is 1 times 70, right? 1 and 7, 70. Whatever you do, it is not going to be negative 3, right? Whether you add or subtract, it is not going to be negative 3. So this is ruled out. 2 times 35 is again, it is 70, okay? But 2 and 35, whether you add or subtract, is not going to give you 3. So that is ruled out. So likewise, you, you, you can use 5. 5 is like 5 times uh, 14 is 70, right? 5 times 14 is 70, but 5 and 14, when you add or subtract, will not give you this negative 3. So just leave that. How about 10 and 7? That is also 70, right? Yeah, 10 and 7, when you multiply, you get 70, and when you subtract, you get, you have to see whether addition or subtraction, uh, you, you should get this uh, sum, okay? So when you subtract, it becomes 3. Now, so let us fix the sign, okay? If I take negative 10 and positive 7, when you multiply, you get a negative 30, yeah, fine. And uh, when I add them, uh, it is subtraction because opposite side, you subtract and put the greater number sign. And so this is also fine. 
so we have got the factors so now while writing just be careful just look at what i'm doing you can put this 5x on both okay so you can put the factor 5x on both the factors then write down the numbers so that is minus 10 here and plus 7 here okay equal to 0 now if you have any anything in common you can just remove that off see here you can divide these two by 5 right because 5 is common so this factor becomes i'm reducing it so it becomes x minus 2 okay and then this i can't i don't find anything common i can't do anything to it so i just write it as 5x plus 7 equals 0 understood so i have factorized it and then maybe you can find the value of x by equating it to 0 i leave it to you that portion now the sixth one again see the sixth one when you just look at it you would see you have five as common factor for all right i told you when you have anything as common just remove that off i am just removing the factor five from it for, by dividing throughout the equation by five so when i divide the 5x square by 5 i get x square plus 5 15x divided by 5 is 3x and 10 divided by 5 will give you 2 equal to 0. Okay. So did you understand that? If you have anything common in your quadratic equation, remove that off. Take it off by dividing by the number. Okay. Now you have got, see your uh, equation is more simplified form. Now the product should give you 2 and the sum should give you 3. The factors of 2 is 1 and 2. Yeah, you can use them here. So this would be x plus 1 and x plus 2. So that is done. Equal to 0. Then equate it to 0 to get the value of x. Here I am just teaching you how to factorize. The seventh one is little different. You do not have the third term. That is the constant c. Okay. No issues. If you don't have, just take what is common out. So you have 3x in common, right? Take that out. So you will be left with x plus 4. So when you take the 3x out, you have x here, right? Uh, the 3x squared is divided by what you have taken out. So you divide that by 3x. You get, you are left with x. Here also divide this term by what you have taken out that is 3x you are left with 4 so that is equal to 0 now uh, how do you equate both to 0 3x equals 0 that is the first one so that means your x is also equal to 0 and the second factor is x plus 4 equals 0 your x is negative 4 and that is the solution for this quadratic equation the two roots are 0 and 4 here the eighth one here you find that the terms are on the other side of the equal to sign i told you before solving for a quadratic equation you have to bring it in its original form so that would be x square bring the 3x this side so that becomes minus 3x and minus 4 equals 0 this is equal to 0 now how do you factorize when you multiply, you should get negative 4. Okay. And when you sum up, you should get negative 3. So what are the possibility factors of 4? You can have 1 and 4. And then 2 and 2. Right. But when you add or subtract, you should get 3. So only this is possible. This is ruled out. So I would take 1 and 4. When I multiply it, it should be minus 4. So I put a minus here and a positive sign here. Okay. So now your factors are x plus 1 and the other factor is x minus 4. And when you equate it to 0, you get x equals minus 1 and x equals plus 4, positive 4. 
the ninth one here it is not a bare x squared term you have a 3 here multiply the extremes in those case so that would be product should give you minus 15 and the sum should give you minus 2 right so the factors of 15 would be 1 and 15 2 is not possible 3 and 5 so this 1 and 15 whether you add or subtract is not going to give you negative 2 but this 5 and 3 when you subtract you may get negative 2 so choose this then you will have to fix the sign so that is going to be here the sum is negative so the bigger number should have a negative sign okay and the smaller number will have a positive sign so your answer would be again remember i wrote i asked you to write 3x as it is in both the factors here also you can write 3x now it is minus 5 here and plus 3 here so here you don't have find any common factor so leave it as 3x minus 5 and this side you have 3 as common factor take it out so you would be left with x plus 1 so you got the factors find the value of x so equate it to 0 so 3x minus 5 equals 0 so your 3x is positive 5 and your x would be 5 over 3 the other answer is x plus 1 is equal to 0 so your x can be equal to negative 1 and you have one final problem here okay now yeah you find half as common right you have to remove the denominator so i am multiplying throughout by 2 so what happens this becomes x square minus x plus 24 equals 0 now your product should give you 24 and your sum should be negative 1 right negative 1 yeah so let's see the possibilities 12 you can write 12 like 1 times 24 1 time 1 and 24 is not going to make the sum 1 so leave it 2 and 12 2 and 12 also whether you add or subtract you're not going to get minus 1 then you have uh, 3 and 8 3 and 8 whether you add or subtract is not going to give you ne negative 1 leave it then you can have 4 and 6 4 and 6 also when you put together are not going to give you uh, negative 1 ruled out 5 doesn't go 6 we already did so there is no solution right okay here you don't find any solution so i hope you would have got a picture like how to do the factorization right this is very simple okay all you need to do is you have to find two numbers such that when you multiply them you should get the product value and when you do, when you subtract or add you should get the middle term hope this video was helpful to you Thank you. Bye.